Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a floating pop-out menu in Diffy. So this is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So before we get started, we are going to be downloading a layout which can be found in our layout packs, which come free with Divi. So over here, this is the one that we need, the charity donate page. So let's go ahead and install this on our website. So I'm going to come over here to my website, click up uh, here and add a brand new page. So I'm going to click on add new. I'm going to add my page title here and we're just going to call this floating pop-out menu. Click on use the Divi builder and then we're going to go to the visual builder. Okay, so to access all our layouts or, or specifically the layout that we're going to use, which is the charity layout, we need to come over here and select choose pre-made layout. So I'm going to select it. Right. So over here, we just need to search for charity or you can just go to community and nonprofit. So this will narrow everything down. And here is our charity layout pack. So the one that we need is the donate. So I'm going to select it and then click on use this layout. So what's going to happen now is that complete layout is going to be installed on my page, which I've just created, and then we can go ahead and customize it. Right, so what we need to do now is to add a brand new section. So I'm just going to click here on this plus button, regular section, and now we need our columns. So I'm going to go with this one here. So I'm going to select it. So here in the left column, we're going to add an accordion. So I'm going to select it. And then over here now, we need to go in and customize this. So the first one here is going to be called giving. So I'm going to click here on this gear uh, icon and rename that. Then go back. The next one is going to be called popular funds. I'm going to go back. So if you want to add more, it's um, very straightforward. All you have to do is to click on this new duplicate button. Or you can just press this button here to add a new one. So let's call this one here about. I'm going to go back. So what we need to do next is to go into each one of these and add our links. So I'm going to click here on giving and then I need to add my links over here. So my links are going to be cash, check and online. Right. So what you want to do now is to add hyperlinks to this. So all I do is to highlight it. You click this chain icon and then add your URL. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a blank URL, but in your case, you need to add the proper URL to the page that you want to link to. So I'm just going to say, okay, here, do the same to those other links. Okay. So this is what we get. So if we take a look here, you see that um, our code in here now has these three hyperlinks, which you've just created. So what you need to do is to go ahead and do the same to popular funds and about. So the next thing we're going to do is to match our accordions with what we already have on the website. So you can see here that these accordions here are styled. So we want what we're creating here to look similar. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy one of these and paste it up there. So I'm just going to save this for now. And then I'm going to copy this and paste it in place. But this is just temporary because all we need is to extend the styles of this one here across the rest. Go into the settings of this toggle that we've just um, pulled into this area here. So I'm going to click here. So we need to go to the icon section. So I'm going to click here on design icon. So here I'm going to right click and extend icon styles. Right. So now we have two options. So we're going to extend all these to all modules. And then here it needs to be throughout this section. And then I'm going to extend. So now you may have not noticed this, but the icons here have changed. Next, we need to come over here to toggle. I'm going to right click, do the same thing, the same thing, extend toggle styles. And then as before, we're going to click on all modules on this section and then extend. Now watch what happens here. Now these two here or these three have this light gray. Now, if I click on extend, you notice that they all take the styles of this one right here. So this is how extend styles works. Next, we're going to go into the title text, do the same thing, extend styles, all accordions, this section. And now again, notice what happens here with the fonts. 
Okay, so now everything is looking pretty much the same. And this is fast and it, it saves you a lot of time going in and doing this individually. So now that we have all our styles extended, now we can go in and delete this one because we don't need it. It's not part of our design. Now we're going to go into our accordion and give it a white background. So I'm going to click here on background and select my color like that. Next, we're going to come over here to design, spacing, and we need to give this some breathing space. So we're going to give it a top and bottom margin of 20. So notice that I'm going to use this chain icon. Now this will just add my values both to the top and the bottom really fast. Next, we're going to come over here to border styles. And then we're going to choose this bottom one here. And we're going to give this one pixel. And then the rest, we're going to set this to zero. Like that. Okay, so the line is only at the bottom. So pretty much our accordion is set. The next stage now is to add our menu title. So I'm going to save this for now. And then over here, I'm going to add a new module. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my text module and select it. So we're going to name or we're going to add the title here and you're going to call this menu. Now we need to go into the text design settings. So I'm going to click here on design. So let's start by adding our text font weight. So I'm going to come over here and set it to bold. The style is going to be all caps and the color is going to be white and the text size is going to be 16 pixels. Next, we're going to go to letter spacing and set it to one. And then for the text orientation, we're going to set this to centered and we're going to disable this on phones and tablets. Now, at the moment, you may not be able to see the, uh, the text here. That's because we set it to white and we have a white background, but we'll be fixing this soon. Now we need to style the row and extend its hover. So let's go ahead and add our colors. So I'm going to save this for now. And then we're going to go into the row settings, click on background, add our background color. So the color I'm going to use here is the color that we have in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So anytime you want to use the exact same colors, just go to that post. And like I said, I'll link it in the show notes below. But you can also use your own colors. If you're just experimenting and trying to find out how this works, you can always go ahead and do that too. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to add a custom width to this row. So I'm going to click here on design, sizing, use custom width. And we're going to set this to 320 pixels. And then over here on the gutter width, we're going to set this to 1. And then equalize column height, we're going to set this to yes. Now we can see that this menu here is all the way right there in the middle of our page. Ideally, we want it to be flash on the left to act as our menu. So what we need to do now is to go into the margin settings. So I'm going to click here on spacing. So I'm going to start here with my margin and I'm going to set it to minus 241. Okay, so now we can see it's all the way here to the left. Now we're going to add our margin on hover. So I'm going to click here on this icon and click on the hover tab. So on hover, I'm going to set this to zero. And then over here, I'm going to set my custom margins of 10 pixels to the left and the right, but this is going to be on the tablet and the phone. So I need to click this little icon here and then choose my tablet and set this to 10% because this is going to be on the left and the right. So let's take a look at what happens here as we make the changes. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the dash uh, to the desktop. Right, so next we're going to add some custom padding to the top and the bottom, and this is going to be zero. Right, so the next stage is to go to the borders because we need to add our rounded corners. So here we're going to add our rounded corners. In fact, let's break this first because they're only going to be on the top right. And this is going to be 10 pixels and the bottom as well. Okay, so notice what has happened here. But so for the next step now, we're going to add some custom CSS. So I'm going to click here on advanced. Click on custom CSS and then we're going to we're going to go to column two main element and paste our CSS code. OK, so what this has done now, it has it has aligned our menu here to the center because before I added this, this was all the way at the top. So in fact, let me just do 
need to get rid of this so I can show you so I can show you again. So you see, without the code, this menu is all the way there at the top, and then once I add this, it becomes centered. And this code can also be found on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now let's update the section. So I'm just going to save this. I'm going to drag this to the top like that. Right. So I'm going to start with the background color. So I'm going to go into my section settings, background, add my color. Next, we're going to add some custom margins. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing, and I'm going to add zero, both to the top and the bottom. We're going to do the same for the padding. And then the padding for the tablets, we are going to add 5% to the top and the bottom. Okay, like that. Now we need to position this row with custom CSS. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go into our row settings. So I'm just going to save this for now and go into the row settings. So right now, because of the padding that I was using and my margins, I don't have access to my rows. So to do that, I'm just going to come over here to wireframe view. And here we go. This is my row. I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And now we have access to our row settings. So in this mode, I'm just going to go back to my desktop view. Right. So what we need to do now is to add our CSS ID. So I'm going to click here on advanced. And then I'm going to add my CSS ID called float. And now we need to add some CSS to this particular page. So to do that, I'm just going to save this. And then I'm going to come all the way down here to this gear icon. Click on page settings, advanced. And now I can add my custom CSS specifically to this page. And now you can see that this has been repositioned. So let's save this for now. Okay, so now it's time to see if our floating pop-out menu is going to work. So if I hover over here, this should pop out like that. So that looks great. And then if I go into any of these links here, you can see that this is working fine. And by the way, don't forget to make sure that you link these links to those specific pages. Now, if I mouse away from this, again, this should go back into position. And there we go. So it's working fine. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.